Hello and welcome back to Delta World. Yours truly, Lord Zindra the Mad. Now, while I promised to go upstairs to talk to Reed, I sort of also want to just take a look around the cannery. See if I can get my fingers chopped off or anything like that. Oh, heavy ammo. Quick save. Do -do -do. No one suspects a thing. This is all food. A little bit of money. I can afford to not steal that. But the uh, heavy ammo, heckin expensive. By the looks of it. So I need to find like another long arm that allows me to just... Long arm rifle would be nice. Be sure I guess. Um, is this what you make things of? Sorry, I've got a lot to do. Are those what Spl uh, Satuna, is, uh, Satuna is made of? Notifications lost and found. Found one left hand, so that the wrist some bone damage. People, this is our second unscheduled amputation in as many months. Please exercise caution and safety around machinery. Maintenance fees will be deducted from your pay. That's nice. Mmm, capitalism. <gasps> Vending machine discovered. Dun -dun -dun -dun. Vending machines offer a variety of items to purchase, mostly from one company. A hack skill of 20 or higher allows you to sell items to the vending machine. Restricted items on a vendor can only be purchased when you have a high enough reputation with the assigned faction or a hack skill of 40 or higher. We don't have 40 or higher yet. Wait, what? Oh right, I got 900 bits from that one person. Ooh. Mm, that decreases stealth though. And aren't these just the same? Yeah. I think I'll buy one of these. And what's this one? Whisper Quiet Master. So that costs a thousand. Ooh. Light machine gun uses light ammo. And is a heavy weapon. Alright. Hmm. Where's my heavy gun that uses light ammo? Here it is! Well, I wasn't using, asking for a heavy weapon, I was use, asking for a long weapon. But, um, yes. I'll take it. Of course I'll take it. Inventory. This is gonna replace my revolver, I think. Seems sensible enough. Hmm, no, we don't want to pick that. But I do want to steal all of that. So if you're not watching me, that's good. Thank you. Parts, heavy ammo. Oof. Good. Excellent. I do like it when my stealing isn't seen. What's in this chamber? Ah, the bathrooms. Lovely privacy there. You could just uh, sit next to someone and have a chat. Go about your day as usual. Come on, get in my inventory. Thank you. I mean, they left me in space for 70 years. I have no issue stealing from the society. Especially considering how... How... How capitalist it is. Ouch. Okay, I can't just steal the power regulator while it's in action. Okay. 
asking, asking Reed about the spear probably would not go over that well either. Right. But it's probably, probably the option to use. At least until we figure out where there's like a lever or something to disable this entire mess. So I can take it. Because I would very much appreciate one of those bits in my ship. Oh, that's, that's a lot of sprats. I'll take their heights. Because that's free money. Free money, all. Alright, and there's another mag pick to steal. Will do. More heavy ammo to steal. Will do. And the terminal to use. Messages. Welcome, Phyllis Granger. Phyllis, owing to your hard work and positive attitude, I have sanctioned your access to a medical treatment in the event of contagion. As you know, the company has not provided us with enough medicine to treat every worker. I wish I could treat every member of the Space's Choice family who fell ill to this plague, but I cannot. Medical privileges are strictly merit-based. Please do not under in any circumstance distribute your ration of medicine to any other worker. We are all in this together. Very conflicting, that. Wait, isn't this... Phyllis Granger, was that the uh, lady we found outside? No. Okay. Theodore buried last night. Reed asked me not to report his death in our quarter list. Sounds fair to me. Was asked to prepare a statement or something for other workers. Been thinking about it. Don't know what to tell them. Don't end life, Theodore. Do your work. Show up. Wear a smile and you'll get your medical privileges. Let's start. Yeah. Not a tosport book. Will do. Will take. Wait, no, you're a se separate person. You the new worker? Whatever. Make it quick, Tenderfoot. I'm busy. I'm guessing you're the foreman? Foreman Granger. Mind those words don't come out of your mouth unless preceded by yes or right away or thank you. I need to get back to work. Sounds like a tool. Fair enough. Alright, so. Am I alone here? Yes, I am. But just in case. Pick up Guide to Mechanical Engineering, Volume 2. Sure. Let's just gain a Mr. Ouch. What is a Mr. Ouch? Also, I'm gonna put on my stealth skills for a moment. And my hat. Oh, he didn't buy the armor. I guess I forgot about that. Take all that. Thank you very much. Continue. From the office of Reed Tops on Outpost Administrator, symptoms of infections have now reached a critical mass. I have instructed our staff to transform the old top missile into sick house. Plague is a reality of life on the frontier, and as spaces we are expected to face up to reality, and the reality is that we do not carry enough medicine to treat all of you. Medical treatment is a privilege, not a right. We must strive every day to demonstrate our worthiness of that privilege. If you find yourself suffering the symptoms of incipient plague, the best thing you can do for yourself and for your family is to don your jumpers and go to work. Work fortifies the spirit, physical illness recapitulates spiritual weakness. Uh huh. Right. Right, okay, uh, let's switch back to our mechanical overalls, so no one mistakes us for a raider again. And we have over 100 shots of in, uh, heavy ammo now, that's good. And we have a shock cannon, which is also a heavy weapon. Hmm, hmm. That's... We have several shock cannons, even. That's fun. But I want to keep one melee weapon equipped. So I'm not gonna use a shock cannon right now. Alright, what else did we find? Mr. Ouch. Attack increases the damage dealt from a power attack. 
Okay. I think the type of the item was attack and blah blah. Ah. Huh. So it's not something we can actually use. It's once again something we can carry about. And I guess the Vicar will now be relatively happy about me stealing his vial. Because that means he can... Okay, so it's another species choice thing. Hmm. Oh, that's a diamond quality thing. Right, 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 right. What's the difference? None that I can see. Very well. Very well indeed. Mac tube melt. Mm hmm. Okay. This is choice indeed. I like that this is actually a functional elevator. The grease monkey, Argo? I'm sorry, Mr. Thompson, sir. You asked why it's taking so long to fix. The answer's technical. Don't apologize. Just try using small words for me. The cans bust open in the oven because she's set to cook saltuna, which isn't what we've got. Mr. Thompson? I think there's someone here to see you. Focus, Miss Holcomb. You and I are still talking. Let's start over. Walk me through the process. Show me where it's going awry. Well, sure. It's uh, mostly on account of what we're feeding into the mechanism. It puts food in cans. We have food, we have cans. Why won't it work like we need? She's expecting Seltuna of a certain size. We're filling the cans with... Well, not fish. No, no, carry on. Don't mind me. Seems we've got a guest. Really now, Parvati, I do wish you'd spoken up. I do apologize. I was given no forewarning of your arrival, or I might have welcomed you at the gates myself. I read. I was told I should talk to you. I'm Reed Thompson, outpost administrator. I cannot help but notice you are not in uniform. I don't work for Space's Choice. Of course not. I don't have that kind of luck. Seems I allowed my excitement to run away with my wits. Been a few seasons since we've had a visitor pass through. I don't plan on staying long. I understand. Your business is your own. Nonetheless, you are welcome in our little outpost. Outsiders are a rare sight in the Vale. If you are a freelancer, then I have use for you. There is pay to be earned or supplies to tide you over, as you prefer. My ship needs repairs. I'm looking for a power regulator. Only regulator we got is hooked up to the town transformer. Mr. Tobson ain't liable to be keen on dismantling it. I beg your pardon. I am most emphatically not keen on any such thing. I can't let you have our power regulator. But I happen to know of another one. And I happen to know exactly how you may retrieve it without frying yourself in the process. Let's hear it. There's a power regulator in the old botanical lab. It's mostly abandoned, so all that power is being squandered. Go down to the geothermal plant. Reroute power from the botanical district over to us. Once their power is shut down, you can have their regulator and be along on your way. When you say mostly abandoned, what do you mean? I was not entirely sure how to tell you this. The botanical labs are not legally inhabited, but there are people who live there. I don't think these people will take kindly to losing their power. No, I do not imagine they will be pleased. But like a parent disciplining an unruly child, you will be doing them a kindness. The people living in the botanical labs, they're deserters, former workers. I need them back at their posts. I need them to come home. Why? Hedgewater is struggling. We haven't hit our production quota in years. If we don't meet our quotas this year, the company might shut us down for good. I need those workers back at their stations. Now what, you, what you're telling me is my problem. It's our problem, not yours, but 
I'm asking for your help. If those workers don't come back, Edgewater is going to collapse. My hope is that by cutting off their power, you will convince those deserters to come back to town. Before you go to the plant, I want you to stop by the botanical lab. Speak to their leader, Adelaide. Tell her the power's about to go, and that it's time her band of deserters came back to town. How will I recognize Adelaide? Adelaide's older than the other deserters. She's dignified, kindly. From what I understand, her camp looks to her for leadership. Those, these workers must have left town for a reason. That reason was me. I asked too much and pushed too hard. But I am ready to make amends if they are willing to return to the fold. We belong to one community, the Spacer's Choice family. If we dissolve into factions, then we will all perish separately. Adelaide will understand that. I'll see what I can do. My dad told me all about the plant. Taught me all he knew. I could come in useful. I mean, if that's all right with you, Mr. Thompson. Sir. I hesitate to part ways with Miss Holcomb, but I cannot deny that she is talented and may prove useful to you. You will need an administrative passcode in order to enter the plant. I am trusting you with mine and trusting Miss Holcomb to guide you if you'd like. Sure. I could use the company. Great! I got my wrenches and diagnosticators and hairpins and engine tape, so I'm all set. Well, I am glad to hear that. Best of luck to you, and thank you again for your help. It is a lot to ask of a stranger, I know. Let's get going. Okay, you're going the companion to your characters to join you in your adventures and help in a variety of ways. Companions provide combat support, their skills enhance your skills, they increase your current capacity. You can unlock special companion combat abilities with inspiration skill and learn more about your companions in your companion ledger. Let's take a look. The Endel makes the best gear for your friends and family the companion ledger. This companion ledger shows you everything you need to know about your companions. You can see the skill status status affection gear. Change your companion's gear, first select the item you want to swap out, then choose a compatible item to replace it with. You can also change how they behave in combat by selecting the preferred weapon, follow distance and aggressiveness. Alright, so you've got a... If I give you the shock cannon, how would you like that? No, well, this, is, this, is, this character is me. I'm just gonna give myself enough uh, spot... Enough of that to have some bonus to that. And... I need three points in deck. Four points in hack. And they still have one point remaining. Ooh. Nice. So maybe point into dialogue? Yeah, let's work on dialogue a little. Uh, no. Apply. There you go. Oh. You have unlocked the dialogue combat skill. When attacking the correct type of target, they are automatically debilitated. What do you mean I've unlocked a combat? What? 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 I'm confused a little bit. Okay, so. I want to take this uh, XP from companion kills. Because that sounds like a good time. Yes. Especially with uh, actually having a friend around with me now. Cool. Alright. Parvati, let's take a look at you again. So I got you a... Little bit of... Uh, Something to help in the range com combat part. You have mechanics overalls, which are better than mine. Don't mind that. And you have no perk points available, which is fine. Distance medium weapons mixed mode aggressive. Sure. Sorry. We better clear out of Mr. Thompson's office before we talk. Alright. 
Get on the elevator so we can go. You have another friend over on my ship if you want to meet him. You probably know of him. His name is Max and he used to be our vicar. We better clear out of Mr. Thompson's office. Hey, mister, can we talk? Sorry. Can we talk? Yeah. Sorry. I... You just want to get out of here. And you likely don't want to tag along like me. It's just... Mr. Thompson has his own view on matters. On account of it's his job and, and what all. But that's not the only side of the tale. Figures. We didn't exactly strike me as the most honest soul. Oh, he ain't a liar. He believes every word he says. It's just, he doesn't always get where other folk are talking from. To Mr. Thompson, a person's a gear. It does its job quiet-like. If it squeaks or stutters, it gets replaced. The deserters are decent folk. I knew some of them before they left. Did you know the satellite Reed mentioned? Miss McDevitt? Oh, gosh, no. She was a real important person. A flavorist. Made all the food taste decent. She used to work up in the big office with Mr. Thompson. All I know is she left after her son died. It was a real big to do. I could hear them both yelling clear from my own place. You can't leave it at that. Why were Reed and Adelaide arguing? Can't say as I know. I wasn't there. The sound carried, but not the words. If Mr. Thompson ain't of a mind to tell you his own self, you'd best ask Miss McDevitt if you can get out to her. How well do you know the deserters? You work with them? Your your friends or what? I don't know anybody well. I mostly listen to them talk, get my head down. There was a boy named Thomas who used to follow me around, asking questions about the stuff I fixed. He was real sweet to me. Not any sort of dissident. I can't blame anyone for wanting to leave. This town's got issues. Life's hard here. Especially for them that don't fit in so well. We're one big Spacer's Choice family, but every family's got the one the rest whisper about. Mr. Thompson's aiming to take away their power. They'll have no lights to see, nor heat to cook. They'll be at the mercy of marauders, or worse. I think you should talk to the town's vicar about it. Max, his name is. I suppose it's going to hurt. We will stop by my ship. Uh, what do we need to talk to the vicar about? Flipping a switch in your power mill? About if what Mr. Thompson proposes to do is upright. Leaving Miss McDevitt's folk to their fate. Their neighbors. Kim. And maybe he can think of something else to try. Something we ain't. He used to go walking outside town. Maybe he found something that'll help. It's just an idea. That's all. You have confidence issues. I suppose it couldn't hurt. We'll stop by. Thanks, mister. I just think when you gotta make a decision that'll hurt somebody, it's best to think on the right and wrong of it. That's what my dad used to say anyways. Thank you. Can I talk to you more? Something you need? I noticed you mentioned your dad a lot, but never your mother. That's on account of how I never met her. You mean she's dead? I don't rightly know. She was in another division of the Spacer's Choice family. She worked in the Vale a few months, sorting the cannery computers. Her contract said any kids she had, expected or not, belonged to her office from the time of conception. So when I was born, I got sent here. All right. That's inhuman. It's sensible. Dad just fixed machines. She did some kind of crazy math, high-level stuff. Better to raise me on his time than hers. Talk later. All right. Well, it's morning. Oh, they opened up this door now. That's cool. Alright, let's go and get back to my ship. What's... Which quests are we currently looking at? Comes down to power? Alright, well... What I'm currently being offered is just uh, an option to leave town. That's fine. I'll do so. I think this is the one the entrance we used to get inside. Where we had all these evicted people. Ooh. This door is open. Watch out! Oh hello. Everyone all right? 
I'm fine. So not all sprats are friendly. Good to know. But... Oh! Nice. I like that our uh, ability is now high enough that we can just uh, grab some of these without any concern. Oh, and we can buy just MacBooks. It's also pretty handy. How many can I buy? Just one? Just one. Alright, that's fine. That's completely fine. Ooh. Yeah, okay. Dextrine, Nicobad. I'm going to assume that Nicobad is something that helps you with smoking. Sounds like it, doesn't it? Oh, this takes a little bit of skin. Unlock second story balcony door. Messages to R. Dobson from L. Gibbs Marketing Division. Excellent news. Hey bosses, just wanted to check up on the new Saltuna Light project. I've been brainstorming some new taglines for the product line and I think some of them will really catch your customers' attention. From R. Thompson, dear Lawrence, I appreciate your hard work on behalf of our beloved brand of Saltuna, but I've just received a response from corporate. They're not interested in your idea of a light version of the Saltuna brand because we'd rather not compete with ourselves, but they are interested in the idea of lighter Saltuna. Effective immediately, we have been instructed to use heavier rated cans so we can back them with less Saltuna, thereby saving pits to every can. This is exactly the kind of breakthrough our cannery needs. In fact, our logistics department has just confirmed my request to have you transferred from the marketing division to the cannery. Can you imagine, Lawrence? You'll be rubbing elbows with your fellow workers on the canning line, filling each slightly heavier can with slightly less Saltuna. Hour after day, hour after hour, day after day. This is, this is a great and tremendous honor for you and for me. Effective immediately, your position in our marketing division has been terminated. I expect you to report to our foreman tomorrow morning. Your uniform will be deducted from your pay. Personal files. Ideas for Saltuna light taglines. Melts on your fork, not in your mouth. Let's fat with some Saltuna favor. It's prime time. Now with the satisfying crunch of cartilage, you can't spell Saltuna without salt. Also can't sell, uh, spell Saltuna with aunts. Potential to market towards families. Okay, loading scientists say it's still food. The Saltuna will thank you. Warning may cause auditor hallucinations. We'll add more later. Okay. Well, I would rather that the Saltuna did not thank me. So this used to be the marketing division. But alas, the marketing division has ended. Because of reasons. Ooh. Okay, so they... Like the pins that are next to each other, their inventory is to get combined for when I want to loot them. So that's interesting. No, oh, I thought I'd been jumped. Guess he did not jump enough. Alright. And jump. Excellent. Let's grab some of this. Some of that. There's some good shit. Alright, well, I want to go back to my ship. So that's where I should start off at, I believe. I'm thinking this is towards my ship because this is where the cave is. Ooh. That's a primal behemoth. I'm not entirely sure I want to get involved with that right now. So I'm gonna get my rifle out, just in case. So you never know what you run into. And I'd most prefer to run into my spaceship, to be honest. Hey, by the way, you don't happen to speak French, do you? Probably not. That sounds extremely unlikely at this point in time. Okay, so that's the camp I previously assaulted, and this is my ship. I'm hoping the lieutenant is no longer here to catch me lying to her. Oh, wow. If 
I've been able to get out here, I so would have stripped this for parts. This is my ship. Yeah, huh? This is my ship. Don't strip this for parts. It's my ship. I'm gonna get where you're coming from, but... I'm wrong. Is this an... These surveillance devices allow me to monitor you constantly. Please ignore them. Ah, okay. Ooh. Easy. I didn't notice that before. A light assault rifle. Still uses heavy. Oh well. It's fine. If your equipment is in need of repair or my appreciate the gesture. Okay, I'm gonna leave the impact hammer here. As in, in my inventory. Dosball stick. Yeah, no. We don't need... Oh. No, we don't... Uh, no, 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 we're in the wrong menu. I want to be in the breakdown menu. Uh, let's break the revolver. Let's break the light pistol. Let's break the dosball blocker. The shock cannon. And this light pistol. And the sword. And the staff. But not the rifle. Just in case. Though in fairness, I could probably also wreck the rifle. It'd be fine. Okay, so this has two things I can do with this. Oh, yeah. Interesting. So it's possible to just uh, keep upgrading a weapon. Oh, this doesn't uh, have the muzzle slot, but it does have a mag mag slot. Do I want to have a plasma rifle? Sure. That sounds like fun. Right. Let's get upstairs. The ship is probably the more... The ship's engines cannot be powered until a replacement regulator has been properly installed. Yes, yes, we, uh, I'm aware of that. I'm just uh, hoping to find the Vicar. Because I believe the Vicar should already be here. Due to catastrophic power failure, all doors will remain on security lockdown. These are the crew's quarters. Alex preferred to travel alone, but he always had me. That's fair. And this? Max Sombra quarter? So I'm gonna assume that Max is currently still in town. All right, let's go back in town. You're still here. Damn, marauders are out of control. Does this mean that the lieutenant is also still here? Don't mind us. We are just uh, further inspecting this spaceship. This very illegally parked spaceship. Ooh, what's that over there? Curiosity once again gets the best of me. Is a, there's a dog over there? And marauders. Okay. In that case. Okay, I think that went pretty well. Quite ammo efficiently as well. And uh, there's a little bit of ashes around. That's fine. Hey, let's just check in with you. Uh, do you have... I think I just found a new helmet. Do you want to use it? Oh, that, that actually looks really cool on you. Yeah. I like it. Like, I know she looks cute, so it, there's reasons to not have her wear a helmet, but eh. Just because someone is cute does not mean that they shouldn't wear armor where possible. 
Plus, people can look cute in armor as well. It's all good. It's all fine. Alright, so there's a quest marker over there, and... Oh god, is this the graveyard? Did I just run into... Hey, Miss Papadi. Come for a visit? Not today. Just helping this fella. Hey, pleasure Don't to meet you. Don't go ambling out in those hills. That's marauder territory, friend. How do you know I'm not a marauder? You talk too pretty for a marauder. Most of them just grunt and yell. Ain't safe out here. You'd best head into town. Avail yourself of Edgewater's high walls and low, low prices. Nice to meet you. I'm Alex Hawthorn, captain of the Unreliable. Pleased to make your acquaintanceship. I'd shake your hand, but I've been hauling corpses. You don't want none of that on you. Name's Silas. Junior in humor for the town of Edgewater. We're all part of the Spacer's Choice family. Junior in humor. Fancy title for Grave Digger. Hey, I earned that fancy title. Started off a lowly junior gravesite builder, then junior interment engineer. Oh, and I was a junior burial assistant for a time. It's pretty really old to be a junior or anything. The rate I've been working, I'm bound to earn a promotion. Must be about 50, 60 burials away from associate in humor. I'm looking to make a little money while I'm here. Got a knack for being discreet like? There's money to be made. Long as you keep your nose clean. Edgewater is a company town, board owned and operated. That includes the cemetery. None of us own our gravesites, we rent them from the company. Renting means money. Money means paperwork. Paperwork means signatures. Some of our families become a mite delinquent in paying their dues, you see. You're making people pay for their own graves? Company policy. If it was up to me, I'd put the whole town ten feet under, free of charge. Why can't you collect these fees yourself? Quotas, mostly. Got a backlog of graves to fill. Bodies won't bury themselves, you know. Alright, I'll collect the fees for you. Four workers still haven't paid up. Phyllis, Conrad, Ludwig, and Martin Abernathy. He's a special case. You may want to twist his arm a little. Why is Abernathy a special case? He just is. Look, I don't want to get into it. Just make sure he pays up. Where can I find these people? Conrad's got a barber shop in town. Phyllis works at the cannery most hours. Abernathy... I ain't seen him in a few days. His domicile is near the cannery. You'll find him in town. All except Ludwig, that is. He's over by the landing pad. There was something else I wanted to ask you. Yeah? You lose a lot of people to Marauders? Former people, yeah. Marauders been raiding my graves, you see. Hence the armed guards. Raises a bounty, Marauders. You and your gods could make a few bits. No can do. This is my post, and I must defend it with my life. I heard you've been crossing off Marauders for Reyes, though. Good on you. This town must be in pretty bad shape if it's keeping you employed. You could look at it that way, I suppose. You could look at us and say, those Edgewater saps lost near every soul to plague. But you'd be wrong. We're survivors. Loyal company folk, brave in the wilds. You're not worried about falling sick? Every now and again, a virulent plague sweeps through our town. That's life on the frontier, I suppose. A body grows accustomed. How long have you been tuner in humor? Grave digger, whatever. Hang on, I'm doing some math in my head. Uh, 20, 30, carry the one. Uh, all my life? Work's been real good to me. Fresh air, exercise. Only problem is the paperwork. Can't get anybody to pay their gravesite fees. That's all for now. Okay, so I have business back in town. More than just uh, to speak to the Vika. Who hasn't actually left the church yet. Because I, I didn't realize it would take so long for him to get his things in order. And that's fine. Alright, let's check in with Abernathy first, because I know exactly where he is. Still in front of his mirror. Somebody's been running around talking about the hope. Wonder if that's a new drug of some kind. I'm here to collect your gravesite fees. Silas knows, doesn't he? That's why he sent you. That's why he wants me to pay up. He knows. Look, I got my gravesite fees right here. See? 
I'm good for my word. Get me that medicine, and I'll see to your payment. Okay, so our previous conversation already made it so we can just get his fees without much trouble. Okay, Conrad. Oh, no. What can I do for you? Uh, Silas sent me the collector dues. Ah, gravesite fees. Silas and I had talked about this at length. I thought I'd made it clear my pecuniary situation precludes the necessary restitutions. You mean you're broke? As broke as pie crust, friend. Bitless, indigent, destitute. I simply cannot afford it. I am a blemish on the prosperity of our fair settlement. When I expire, I expect Silas to toss my body into a ditch. You have a very loose definition of the word prosperity. Edgewater is built on the discipline and sacrifice of its people. Say what you will about our town, but we all pull together. Tell Silas I can't afford to pay, and that I fully expect to have my medical rights revoked for this dereliction. With my apologies. Hang on, medical rights? Some time ago, I fell ill with the plague. By the grace of the law, and through my own hard work, I'd proven worthy of treatment. Frankly, I don't imagine I'll earn that right a second time. The barber work hasn't been profitable, you see. I've had to keep this old place running with my own savings. Just give Silas an IOU. Not a bad idea. But I'd need some kind of collateral. My pair of lucky clippers! No, that won't do. Your idea intrigues me, but I'm afraid I don't have anything to give Silas. I'm open to suggestions. What about Eugene's gold thief? You know about Eugene? How? I found a note from Phyllis. Then, you know Phyllis suggested selling off Eugene's gold teeth. I didn't approve of the idea then, and I don't approve of it now. Eugene's golden teeth were a family heirloom, representing three generations of poor dental hygiene. He took them to his grave. I'm sure he won't miss them. That's unthinkable. Eugene's body and all rare earth minerals contained therein are solely the property of Spacer's choice. I can't ask Silas to dig up a man's body and pry a few teeth loose from his jaw just to pay my bills. Can I? Uh, are you asking rhetorically? Because if you're being serious... Ugh, gross. Desperate measures, Miss Holcomb. Desperate measures. I'm going to have to ask Silas to dig up those teeth. It's the only way I'm paying my gravesite fees. Ask forgiveness from the vicar later. The good vicar Maximilian and I have never quite seen eye to eye, but your point is well taken. Here you are. Gravesite papers affixed with my signature and an IOU. Goodbye. Okay, let's talk to Phyllis next. Oh, so you were about to say that you never had Conrad cut your hair? It's fine. You think corporate's ever gonna visit? I've always felt weird in here. Too clean. Fair enough. Hey, hey. I'll meet you on the ship when you're ready to depart from Emerald Vale. Captain. Parvati wanted to talk to him about what Reed asked us to do. But what? I thought you would talk to him. You wanted to speak to me, Ms. Holcomb? Every time I've tried to engage you in conversation, you look at the floor, answer in single words, and slink away. I can't imagine what would be so grave as to drive her to my mission. What has Mr. Thompson asked you to do? Got off the power ray to Adelaide's deserters. Depriving them of safety from the marauders and wildlife. I can see why that troubles you. Miss Holcomb has a soft heart. Always has, if you believe the talk. What do you think of Adelaide's group, Vika? They rejected the order of society and live beyond the walls so thoughtfully provided by our Spacer's Choice patrons. Does that strike you as a responsible life choice? Depends on how well the leader can provide beyond your walls. Astute. But I am here, not in the deserter camp. So that's not a variable I can account for. So what do you advise? Assuming your goal is to save as many as possible. 
then you should bring everyone together. Send the power to Edgewater and convince the deserters to return to the fold. Is it impossible? Not if things are left to stand as they are. How did you know I'm an outsider? I've never seen you before. And there's been no paperwork indicating a transfer. Half the time it's wrong, but a new worker without paperwork? Unheard of. Also, you lack the distinctive worker gaze. Usually either a deadening behind the eyes, or in some rare cases, a wild-eyed frenzy. Like a trapped animal. Pretty universal here. Except for Miss Holcomb, who for some reason doesn't seem to have much to say to me. Isn't that right? It's just... There's more to it all than numbers. Sorry. I'm a bit surprised to hear this Mr. Bird rishin as so casually. I'm simply bemoaning the level of spiritual awareness in this town. Isn't it your job to raise that? Yes, but there are few who hear me in this miserable place. I must double my efforts to elevate my flock. These are good, hard-working people here. We both know that we are just leaving. Hold on, did you just refer to this town as a miserable place? Yes, and thank you for pointing it out. It is wrong of me to succumb to distress. This place could be so much more, and I will continue in my quest to make it so. We're both lying here, aren't we? What sort of spiritual advice do you offer here? They who are not satisfied with their work are satisfied with nothing. No. How about, um, work fortifies the spirit. True exhaustion awaits idle hands. I'm, I was actually asking what your religion was all about. The OSI teaches that the Grand Architect set a perfect system in motion at the beginning of time. Contentment is found by accepting one's role in that grand plan. What does OSI stand for? The Order of Scientific Inquiry, also known as Scientism to the layperson. OSI, Scientism, not very religious sounding. You sure you didn't just make all that, this up? Mock me all you want. I know my beliefs to be true. How do you talk to this Grand Architect? Prayer, meditation, or what? You don't talk to the Grand Architect. Once the universe was set in motion, it stepped back. It has no concern for us. It doesn't sound like a very motivational or religious philosophy. What's there to aspire to? We will eventually decode the plan and all its intricacies. Once we are able to deduce the properties of every particle in the universe and its trajectory, we will know everything. The future, the past, each person's place within the plan, all will be laid out before us, removing struggle and bringing peace. No one will ever need question their path again. Some even believe this ultimate knowledge will unlock mankind's true potential, and we will all become akin to grand architects ourselves, after a fashion. Really, how does that work? Tell me more. Well, first there's the matter of the secret blood rites and animal sacrifices. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Seriously, though, to truly understand the metaphysics involved takes years of study and contemplation. I just thought of something else I need to be doing. Bye-bye. Yeah, huh? You okay? You mentioned something earlier that I wanted to ask you about. You mean about the mission being too clean? Isn't it supposed to be clean? It's church. I know, but Vicar says the universe is a machine, and it runs by law. Real machines have gunked up oil, scratches, and worn bits. You can tell they've seen handling, been used by folk. The machine Vicar sees is one ain't never been run. It's not for people to live in. It's something on a museum shelf, under glass. You're a mechanic. Whenever you see a machine, it's in need for fixing. Fixing the universe is a job for somebody way better than the likes of me. Let's get back to it. Don't be that pessimistic. We have a lot of universe to fix. Probably. To some extent. Alright, so we... Right, 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 right. Before I go anywhere else, we still need... Let me just uh, put this as... My current focus. Yeah, I can. Excellent, because I want 
Everyone to be for the graves. Somebody's been spinning a tale about a lost colony ship. Talk like that'll get you reported real quick. Graveside fees I'm here to collect. Shit. Silas still on about that. Here, take the fees. I'd appreciate it if you didn't tell Reed I was late on my payment. These papers aren't signed in your name. Because they're not my fees and not my gravesite. Guy I worked with shot himself. I paid the bill. You had to pay for your neighbor's gravesite fees? If you're not familiar with board law, you ought to be. Law requires delinquent gravesite fees to be paid by the deceased party's closest living relative, which meant me. Shame, though. Eugene was a good worker. You said this guy shot himself? Woke up one morning and put a round through his upper story. Can't imagine why. The kid was doing all right at his desk. We all thought he was an upstanding receptionist. Just between the two of us, I'm pretty shocked his weapon didn't misfire. Spacer's choice handguns aren't the most reliable. Must be tough losing family. Eugene wasn't family. I thought you said you were his closest living relative. Yeah, I was the closest living person relative to his body at time of death. I'm the one who found him, you see, so I pay the fines. Suicide's a crime. The legal term is irreparable damage to company property. What Eugene did to himself was vandalism. What are they gonna do, arrest his corpse? When one of your workers commits a crime, the entire town pays for it. In other words, Edgewater would have been penalized pretty hard. Whatever Eugene was worth as an asset, we would have had to pay out of pocket to Spacer's choice. He was a person of an asset. Well, excuse you. I'll have you know, Eugene was an asset to us all. May his atoms be commended to the law. All I know is Silas asked me for Eugene's gravesite fees. Which means he was approved for burial. Which means his papers went through. Which means the town's in the clear. I'm just glad to put this whole ugly affair behind me. Eugene can rest his bones in peace. And the rest of us can get on with our own lives. I'll let you get back to work. That was a smart. Oh well. Onwards. Right, so... Can I zoom out of this map? Region. So I want to get on the other side of town. So I want to leave by that door over there. So we can go and collect the final monies. Alright, so this is where I was supposed to be landing. When I was little, we'd get freighters in every Sunday noon. Now they only come but once a month. I love them. Hey. Thank the law. I've been requisitioning backup for months. Guess the boss finally came to his senses. You ever swung a truncheon? Let me see your rifling stance. I want to make sure you're up to snuff. Silas sent me. You owe him your gravesite fees. I told Silas I'd pay my dues if he agreed to join the resistance. Guess this means he's finally heard the calling. What are you babbling about? The war. The coming apocalypse. Man versus machine. I'm talking about mechanical soldier. Cold, heartless automatons made of iron and lies. I, yeah, I gotta watch out for those mechanicals. That's right. That's what I've been saying. We gotta square our shoulders and stand ever vigilant. Auto-mechanicals. Creatures forged in the fires of malevolence. I seen them over by the old power plant. Clattering about. Firing at the birds. Orchestrating their uprising. When the swarms of mechanicals come clanging on over that hill, where will you be? Cowering beneath your cot? Or standing shoulder to shoulder with the resistance? If your resistance needs another gun, I am for hire. I've been gathering up a war chest over the years. Saw tuna cans mostly, some spaces chaw, a few bit carts. I'll reward you for your aid. Proper army pay enlistment fees. Enlistment fees? Yeah, I suppose. Wouldn't want to give the resistance a bad name. What do you need done? They have sent a scout. 
prowling around the junkyard just behind our beloved town. This scout must not be permitted to return to its base of operations. Cross it off, then report back. Got a question for you. Go on. What exactly do you do here? I'm Ludwig Miller, Associate Security Officer for Transportation. Officially? Unofficially? Strictly between you and me. I am the only thing standing between Edgewater and total annihilation. A little bit. Alright, well. That was a sight. Okay, workbench here. Do you mind if I steal? Not officially. Don't mind us, we were just... Uh, uh. Carry on. Nice! Okay, so you approve of my actions. Good. Don't find it any other way. What do we have over here? So the shotgun, we already have one of those. Return. I mean, we could buy not one of these. These are good for our, my people to have. Like something you need. I uh, will talk later. I I meant to do this one actually. Give you a bigger hat. Does it look as cute or cool? But it defends you better, to be honest. Axis. Ooh. That's cool and all, but it's not an immediate concern. Okay, time. What's all? What's with all these vending machines? Ooh, that looks nifty. Don't have the money for it then. We don't really seem to be using melee weapons much. We test the light troop armor. There's the ordnance control armor. Light troop armor? Generally better. I still can't afford it though, but I could sell something. Like all my junk. Hold C to sell junk. There we go. How much money do I have now? Just enough to get me dressed. Okay. Like this is for when we are in actual combat though. Because this is dodge plus 5, stealth minus 5. Like I'm gonna keep my tech skills while I'm in town. So it seems like this hangar is not somewhere I'm meant to go in. So clearly that means I should go in here. It's a free second hack. Great work. That's fine. Drugs. 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 I saw that. Oh, what hello. do you think you're doing? Nothing. Mm, nothing at all. All right. So let me catch you here again. I mean, we sort of broke in here, so... Let's try that again. Where is he? He's over there now. Quick save. I do want that Andreno. And the bridge. I'm very glad that my... You some sort of freelancer? I need a friend uh, here that I hired. 
That's not at all a mind that I'm just stealing the town supplies. That guy they did seem to mind there. They can't really blame him. Okay, that's a two second lock pick. Just walk away, buddy. Walk away. Okay, this this cost me a few Packy things, but uh, do you sell any? Yeah, you do. I'm gonna buy all of those. You got any? You do. Excellent. Okay, so let's take a look at our channel. We have a small green matter, which will take us back to the side of town, but. We might as well look at the Thai robot while we're on our way there and go around town th in this direction. What's all this then? It's a fair amount of noise down there. Let's go look at that auto mechanical scout. Let's see if he's as strong a threat as advertised. Hello. How are you doing? Searching for repair bay. Error. Navigation systems failed. Unable to comply. I could probably fix that. I mean, if you wanted me to. I can do it myself, actually. That's not bad work, mister. You done this before? Navigation systems operational. Optimal path toward repair bay detected. Initiating self-diagnostics. Oh, hey, don't show me something for the repairs? Spacer's Choice reminds all colonists that serving the Spacer's Choice family is the highest possible reward. I have been program to deliver this pre-approved message. Ah, that's ridiculous. Okay. Mr. Power. We can check the chunk rat. Chunk rat. No, the chunk yard for more loot. Okay, can't sneak in from under there, I can't sneak in from under here. So I've got to guess that the previous corner that we were at is the correct way in. It's fine. I just have to make my way around again. Thank you. Thank you. I can hear someone cackling. Let me just find the music box. That's fine. Because supposedly I can tell Ludwig that this was a false alarm. Ooh, what's that? Oh, then fucking sexy. That's what it is. A lava river. Love those. Hot lava. Alright, so. I'm gonna tell Ludwig that uh, he, that was just someone looking for repairs. Bring us honor, soldier. You won't have to worry about the scout anymore. You beat that scout to scrap with its own legs? Pulled its optic cables out its headcase? Actually, don't tell me. Rather use my imagination. You're a passing fair soldier, I will confess. But you are one, and the enemy is legion. What you need is an equalizer, a weapon to strike fear in their cold, mechanical hearts. Cantina, lavatory, behind one of the toilets. That's where I've kept it hidden all these years. You hid your secret opening in the lavatory. Sharp, ain't it? The lavatory is the very last place a mechanical has need to enter. <laughs> I mean, that sounds wrong. 
on the double soldier. Don't want the bartender poking around in there with a mop. I mean, she probably has. Let it be. Okay, well, thanks for watching. Uh, we'll go get that secret weapon and uh, let uh, Silas know that everyone has done something about their dues. And I'll see you next time. Which is when we will do those things. Yeah. Bye bye.